Howdy, my name is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today we changed up the format a little bit. I'm going to be using a screen cap program in order to share my screen with you because these games I don't actually have with me. And that way you can kind of see them in all their glory, or should I say uh, in none of their glory. Today we're going to go over my top 10 worst rated games since joining this board gaming hobby community. Now these are not going to cover games like Monopoly or a lot of childhood games that are things that you probably wouldn't consider great games in general, but more games that are catered towards people who have been in this space for a while. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So my number 10 is So Long My World. Now, So Long My World is a Kickstarter game where the concept is really cool. The world is going to end. Everybody has a day. They've all had a dream that says, in a day, the world will be over and you're going to cease to exist. So your job is to figure out how you want to live that last day. Do you spend it with a loved one? Do you, you know, let go and break all the rules and be a terrible person. So it's up to you how do you want to do this. But unfortunately, that doesn't translate into the gameplay. The game itself is a game of collecting symbols that you use to trade in for cards in a very boring way, unfortunately. So it has this action selection mechanism where you're secretly picking what you want to do. And if you match, you cancel with somebody. Honestly, I don't really remember a lot of this game. This was one where I played it a couple times and there was no reason to go back to it. It was very boring. Um, really sad because the theme is great. Even the solo mode isn't a good reason to keep it. Uh, it has you looking for specific cards, so the setup is, takes a long time, and the gameplay itself is more of a puzzle of just choosing the right order. Not that exciting. Really let down on this game. And what, what can I expect, though? It is a Kickstarter game. This is, unfortunately, only one of a couple of the Kickstarter games that I've gotten that has not been so great. But that's the risk you do when you back these games. So I'm glad they did get to see their project um, come to realization. But unfortunately, the game itself it probably could have taken some more playtesting, um, been more thematic. Really unfortunate. So that's my number 10. Let's go to number 9. Cockroach Salad. I got this game because of the artwork and the kind of line that it's in. It's in this bug series with like Cheating Moth and Cockroach Poker. Some fun little games. But this one is a, um, is a speed... I guess, recognition game, kind of similar to Jungle Speed, but it is an inferior version of Jungle Speed, as it's not only just has to do with the pictures that you're looking at, but the things you're saying, which is pretty sad, unfortunately, because I thought it was cool, has great artwork, but the game itself is just not exciting. It's kind of annoying more than anything, and it's something you can get good at, but you don't really want to be good at. You might hear a little bit of uh, barking back there. We're watching puppies right now, so we've got a couple of little guys in our house. Really cute. Um, next thing we have here is number eight, is Poo the Card Game. Now this is a game that, by all by all means, it's, it's exactly what it sets out to be. You're a monkey throwing poop at each other. So that game's concept can only go so far, but I mean, there's no reason to play this, unfortunately. It's goofy, it's silly. I gave this away at a white elephant. I mean, nothing really noteworthy, unfortunately. The game is exactly what you think. You throw poop at each other, and it does have player elimination, which I think does also kind of ruin it a little bit. Um, but it's weird, like if you're the first person to come out, to go out, you go back with um, a, a golden banana, so you get like an extra life. Honestly, just not a very exciting game, not a very fun game. Really sad, and that's Poo, Poo the card game. Uh, number seven here is Jurassic Parts. Now, I did not buy this game. Uh, this was one that I played from a friend. Uh, two friends actually had this game, and wow, it's bad. I was so surprised. It's beautiful, gorgeous, great theme. You're an archaeologist digging up parts of dinosaurs, and you're trying to combine these parts and make... Um, sets, essentially. But the way you do this is you're laying down chisels. Now, if you're the first person to go, you put chisels on the uh, sides of these um, hexagons, and once an entire section of the map is covered by these chisels, then whoever has the most chisels on that section gets to pick first from this collection of tiles that you've cut off from this large section. Now, here's where this game gets a little bad for me. Um, when you're playing this, there's you can get bonus actions on your turn if you complete statues, or it's not statues, if you complete these fossils. And when you do that, you're going to be getting a amber token. You can use that amber to take additional actions. And this leads to a huge runaway leader problem. And the unfortunate part of it is whoever is going last in the turn order 
gets these automatically. They get extra amber, extra chisels, so they're allowed to take more actions on their first turn, and they're able to start getting that amber right away and start really channeling a lead. So it's really interesting. If you're first, you put down a couple chisels, you're trying to set up something, the next person goes. They can immediately cut you off of whatever you're doing and reduce your, you know, your yield extremely. And that just keeps on compiling. Everyone's doing it to each other. But unfortunately, the person who really is in the highest advantage is that last player. They get extra amber when they begin, and they can really go, for, um, you know, just go off. They got an extra action. They can complete more um, of these fossils. They can just keep going after that. And it's really unfortunate. I mean, it's a cool sounding game in theory, but in practice, the game is just not fun. It's got a huge runaway leader problem. And it's not exciting to play. You just kind of sit there. And it takes a long time because people are planning their turns because you can totally math it out and plan what's going to happen. And yeah, you can talk to the people at the table, but they're all for the, themselves. And ultimately, that per the people with the extra actions are going to start getting that rolling lead because they're able to complete things faster and they'll be able to kind of chain their completion. So I was very disappointed in Jurassic Park's uh, great theme, but not a very good game. All right, number six is Pendulum. Now, I'm a big fan of the Stonemaier games in general. I'm very excited for Red Rising coming soon, but Pendulum was a big miss for me. Um, this was another one that I did not buy. I was apprehensive of getting it because it is a real-time competitive game, and real-time games in general, you have to be in a certain mood to play, and a real-time competitive game, um, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with people not understanding the rules. And you might say that, hey, this has a um, aspect to the game where you don't have to play it in real time. And to that I say, the best part of this game is the aspect of the real time, and it's not done well, which is really unfortunate because uh, the game itself is really boring. Um, in the game, you're going to be using these workers, and you go into a space, and you can use that space once the timer runs out on the space. So you put a guy down, when the timer runs out, you flip it, and then you can take the action once you've moved that timer. And then you take your guy off, um, you can go somewhere else. But unfortunately, the actions themselves are not satisfying. They're pretty boring. And each you have like asymmetrical characters that you get to play as well. And unfortunately, those characters are pretty boring as well. They have these cards, which seem exciting, but they put you into this gameplay loop where you're going to be redoing the same thing over and over again. Uh, I've played a couple times, and I've played a couple times real-time, a couple times non-real-time, and the real-time is better because um, the time actually becomes an aspect of the game that you're looking at. You're predicting when to flip things, you're letting things run longer so that other opponents are wasting their time, but the game itself is... I just find very non-exciting. When you play the game, you find yourself doing the same strategy over and over again based on your character. And sometimes that's cool in games, but in this game, it's more of like, I go to this space, I go to this space, I wait for that timer to go, I flip it, I move, I flip it. It becomes an exercise of bop it, where you're just sitting there pushing buttons and knowing what's going to come out. It's really unfortunate because the theme is really cool. The game itself looks awesome but the game is really, really boring. Um, I remember the last time I played this game where I knew that I'm just not gonna play this again. Um, I sat there, I took my turn, and it's real time, right? So everyone's taking their turn, and I'm, I've done all my actions, and I sat there and waited. And I was like, wow, here we are in a real time game, and I'm not doing anything. I'm sitting here waiting for my turn, even though we're all played at the same time. I couldn't believe it, because I had just figured it all out. I was like, all right, this is what I'm doing. I won the game. It, it's, it's not rewarding. It's not fun. It's really sad. So games like Project Elite knock it out of the park, and I'd love to see something like this in this uh, manner really succeed. So maybe next time we'll, you'll get them. So that's Pendulum. My number five is Talisman. A talisman is touted as this dungeon crawling adventure, grand adventure. It is. It is this ad adventure. You're going to be going through this fantasy land, but the way you do it is you roll a die and you move where it tells you. It's a roll to move game where you're like, man, I really want to do this. So I'll roll, I'll see what I can do, and you just do whatever the card says. This game reminds me a lot of things like, um, oh, what's the game? Tales of Arabian Nights, where you're just kind of doing stuff just to do stuff. There's no real crazy strategy. It's you just go. You decide to go like left or right. That's like the biggest decision here. Now, it's been a long time since I played this game, too. Um, this was one of the ones I played earlier in the, the hobby. 
I played this like right after playing Scythe, I think, for the first time. And I was super disappointed because it had a cool theme and the game itself was really, really boring. Like, and it's one of those games where a turn can take a long time. So there's a huge amount of downtime and what you're doing in your turn is not fun. I'm like, I spent a lot of time on this one because I would just stay away from this one. They get worse and worse as we go. So this is this is bad. <laughs> Talisman. Yeah, there's a reason it's rated pretty low. Let's keep on going. So number four is the one that inspired me to do this list. This is Cantaloupe, uh, book one, Breaking into Prison. I was super excited for this game. I heard some good things about it. Uh, Man vs. Meeple pointed this out as one of their most anticipated games of this year. I was really excited. It sounded really fascinating. The uh, point-and-click adventure, you're moving around. But unfortunately, the point-and-click adventure is satisfying because it's instant. And it's something that you can go to. And the, let's talk about the concept of the game really quick. In this game, you are going back to your hometown, and your job is to break into a prison, as the title suggests. Now, there's spoilers in this game, so I won't get into the spoilers, but the big component of the book is you have these item cards, and you'll be combining them with other items or with the map itself in order to get reactions. And so maybe you have a, I'm just going to use a random example, maybe you have a clock. And with that clock, you can combine it with a piece of paper, and now all of a sudden you've taken a note. Sure, whatever. Maybe that's something that you're trying to work on. But the part where this game falls apart for me is I felt like I was just doing busy work, wasting my time, and it was a slog to play. I just didn't have any fun, which is a shame because the writing in this game is wonderful. It's got a bunch of little jokes, a bunch of uh, quirky writing. Wonderful there. But the game is so tedious. I mean, you're sitting there and you're taking your cards and you, as you play, you're going to get a bunch of cards and you have to just scan each one because some of them might not be intuitive right away. Um, the board itself is a little misleading as to what things, not misleading, but a little confusing as to what things might point to what. And you're having to flip back and forth in this book as you play. And it felt like I was just, I don't know, I was doing busy work the whole time. I went to every location. I looked at every single thing and you have to go from a page to your cards, to the book, to the cards, to your little pamphlet that has the um, cards that match the other cards because obviously they can't put those in the book because um, what if you combine something that doesn't make any sense and you check your book, to s you can't fit all that in a page. So it was really annoying, really frustrating, and really boring. I found myself looking at the uh, back of the book because I needed some clues because there were points where I had no idea where to go. So I'd look in the back of the book for clues as to what to do next. And when I got there, I was like, wow, OK, uh, I guess I'll do that. And then I would do it. And then the same thing would happen. And I find myself going back to the back of the book again. And eventually I got to the point where I was like, this is just not a very satisfying game. Um, the leaps are not that interesting. I don't in, I'm not enjoying myself at all. I wouldn't recommend this to anybody, unfortunately. I wish that there was a better way to do this. I like the idea of the combining, but I think it's done really poorly here. I think the game that probably does this the best is um, uh, probably Unlock, but even that being said, it's my least favorite part of Unlock. So it's like they took a whole uh, game and centered it around the worst part of another game. And that's really sad. So that's Cantaloupe. Um, really disappointed. That's my number four. Now, now we're getting into the worst games. These are all ranked twos. So these are awful. Um, let's jump into it. So my first game was a huge disappointment. Uh, Epic Spell Wars Battle of the Wizards. Rumble at Castle Tentacle. So this is a line of games. And I got this while I was in Ireland. So I was really excited to play it. And I was on a trip with my family. And we picked it up and we played it. And it's one of these games where you are wizards killing each other. It has some mechanics for when you die that you're going to get um, this blood power. So you'll be able to uh, be stronger. I, I don't remember the thought of the mechanics. I played this maybe five years ago. And it was a game where we played it and we found it to be incredibly long, incredibly boring, and a game where we finished the first round. And you're supposed to play multiple rounds. And we just were like, I think we're done. Because didn't have any, um, any inclination to continue. The artwork is really great. I did, that was one of the things I drew me into the game. Because I saw the artwork, I thought it looked really fun. But the game itself is really long, boring, and not exciting. There's a bunch of games that do it a million times better. Um, if you want a game like this, really play uh, Super Fantasy Brawl or Mage Wars. If you want a huge arena combat game, you can do something like uh, Arena of the Contest. But 
I would not recommend Epic Spell Wars Battle of the Wizards. This is, this is a bad game. Don't play it. Yep, that's that. Number two, we got Betrayal. And this is Legacy and um, Haunted House on the Hill, the original one. Um, I actually got Betrayal Legacy because of a recommendation, again, uh, from one of the other YouTube channels. They said that it solved a lot of the problems that Betrayal um, at the House on the Hill had with it. And I did not find that true at all. I played a couple scenarios of the Legacy version. I threw it out. It was bad. It was it just exacerbated the problems with the original. So in Betrayal Legacy, you are a bunch of people who are exploring a haunted house until a certain random event will happen where you roll dice and a random event will happen which will trigger the haunt. Now, it sounds like a cool concept where you go into a haunted house and a haunt happens, but the execution is really poor. So as you play on your turn, you move based on your might skill, and you'll move around, and you, or sorry, your speed skill. You'll move around, you'll do stuff, interact with the house, getting items, but you're just kind of doing stuff at the first part of the game. You're exploring. But there's no real reason or aim. It's another one of those games where things are just happening, and it's kind of, sure, awesome, this is great, whatever. But as you play, eventually you'll get to a point where somebody will roll dice and randomly we don't know when it'll happen a haunt will start and this is where the game comes to a screeching halt everyone stops playing and then you have to separate into two groups one is the person who is the, the bad guy essentially and they have to read a whole new set of rules and the same person who's playing has to do the team of players who's playing as the good guys has to do the exact same thing now this is really poor game design in my opinion because People are going to interpret things differently. People don't know all of the, um, I guess, the instances, the edge cases for the rules, the interactions between the two. And the books are made specifically to where the bad guy has one and the good guys have one. And some of the information is left out of both of them. And so the complete game is not really shown to everybody. And there's a lot of questioning. I'm like, oh, can I do this? Is this actually how to play? So this is like edge case galore. And I find it just really boring. And the worst part is like, sure, if that was a problem, the game itself was great, awesome. But this is a problem and the game is not good. So there's a skill in the game that you use, I think it's might, where whenever you attack somebody, you roll your might, they roll their might, and whoever rolls the highest um, deals damage to the other person. So it's, if you're attacking, you can take a bunch of damage if you're the person attacking, if the other person rolls better than you. And if you're fighting something that just has better might than you, there's just no way to really progress in the game. And the legacy version exacerbates the problem because a lot of this game is extremely luck-based. And if you draw a card that is lucky, it will follow you from round to like, game to game. And so you have this special thing and no one else does. And it sucks. It's like, It feels awful. And I can't describe how much I dislike this game. I was really disappointed. I love exploration and adventures, but man, this is so poorly done. I would not recommend this to anybody. The theme is really cool, but if you want a game like this, play Mansions of Madness. Play a game where you're, the exploration is front and center, and but the gameplay is also good and supports it. Or play a game like Arkham Horror LCG. Let's be real, that's the, the best version of this. I mean, Mansions of Madness is not my favorite game either, but wow, ah, this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not even the cream of the crop. The worst rated game on here, in my opinion, the, my least my least favorite game that I've ever played is Drunk Quest. Now, as the title implies, you are going on a quest by drinking. So this game is alcohol-fueled. Now, I don't drink very often, maybe twice a year. I drink maybe during holidays, uh, sporadically. Maybe I'll get a cider some night, but I don't drink normally. And this was a game that I played when I was in my 20s. So my early 20s. I think I had just turned 21 and we played this game. So we were, this was like, yeah, we turned 21, we could drink now. This game is really dumb. So if you've played Munchkin, uh, this is a game where you're going to be going on a quest and you're going to be uh, battling monsters. And if you defeat them, you get to level up. And once you get to a certain level, you win the game. However, to defeat the monsters, you must drink alcohol. Now, you can use drinks as whatever term you'd like. It could be a, a shot. It could be a cup. But oh boy. So in order to defeat a certain creature, you have to drink that's the core concept of the game, and everybody has abilities that manipulates how much you have to drink, or uh, you have to force other people to drink, or... This game is just asking to get sick. 
And it's really funny because when you play this game, the first 10 minutes of the game, you might see a monster that says, oh, you need 10 drinks to defeat me. And you're like, I can do that. No big deal. Yes, I will kill this thing. Give me those 10 drinks. You 10 minutes into the game, you're going to fight a monster that's, oh, it takes two drinks to defeat it. And you sit there like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, it's, a, it's a little goblin. Two drinks. I, I don't know, guys. And everyone has these cards in their hand that they can play on each other. Like you could play a cup of water where the person reduces a drink or the person has to drink water instead of the alcohol for this round or things like this or the double the drinks you have to take. And this is just asking to get sick. It's asking to be miserable. And it really promotes like ganging up on certain people because if somebody's going to win, you're obviously going to gang up on them. And this can be this can be toxic in general, like to the, the group, to the person. This is... This is a tool to just like, I don't know, abuse alcohol. And I, I don't like it at all. Um, I would say I'm happy I played this game, but I was more happy that I was enjoying my 21st with my friends. I don't think I will ever, I will, I'm not even gonna say I don't think, I will never play this game again. Um, I remember I gave it away to a friend when he turned 21. And I hope that he had a fun time with his, with, with friends as well. But wow, drunk quest. I hate it. <laughs> and that's it. So that's my top 10 lowest rated games I've played since entering the hobby. Um, wow. This has just brought up a bunch of memories of like, yeah, that was awful. Oh, man. Jeez. <laughs> and, uh, probably the ones that I'm the most disappointed about are Cantaloupe, honestly. the Right now I'm watching uh, Puppies. And so I, my attention has to be pretty much on them. And Cantaloupe is a book, so you can open it and just kind of look at it. And it was seemed like a great game to play while I could do this. But, oh man, the fact that it was frustrating and boring and just busy work, I felt like, wow, I could be playing anything else. Give me a roll and write. Give me something that's going to actually have me make decisions instead of make guesswork and just keep my hands busy. Not a fan. So I was really disappointed in Cantaloupe. I was super excited to try it out. This one's out. And then the other huge disappointment is probably So Long My World, which is really sad. Um, I love the theme on this. That seems like such a cool idea of having to decide between um, the, how to spend your last moments alive. Um, that's all the time for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or any comments about what you saw here, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, what's the worst game you've ever played? Or what's a game that maybe other people think are bad that you think is really good. Let me know. Uh, curious to hear, see what you have to say. Thanks so much for watching. Side Game Strong.